Hello, everyone, and welcome to the huddle on 93.3 Plattsburgh FM, New York. Wow, that was pretty quick of me. Cool. Anyway, welcome back, everybody. So, week two of the NFL has finally ended, and I think we have to go over some of the games because a lot of them were fun to watch. Let's start right away. Let's get. Th let's make this a quick show because we haven't done a quick show yet. Let's get under 30 minutes. I know we can do it. It's very easy, and we have no questions today. So, it's going to be a very quick show. Just going to go over the games for the last week and go over the games for this week. Uh, sadly enough, this is being recorded on Saturday, the day before the NFL game, so I did miss Thursday Night Football. As you guys know, I probably would have picked the Jets because they destroyed the Lions. We weren't so sure on if the Jets were really good or really bad, um, but we, we haven't figured out that yet, but now we kind of have an idea. Um, so the next question is, is Baker Mayfield better than people thought he was going to be? Or, or, the, or are the Jets bad? Because Sam Darnold, is, he's still a good quarterback. I think he's going to be good in this league. Anyway, forget that. Let's go on to week two. Starting off with the Ravens and the Bengals. As I said before, I thought the Ravens were going to win this game. Turns out, no. Joe Flacco decided to be, well, Joe Flacco, not in the playoffs. And Andy Dalton decided to be a top 10 quarterback. Uh, the Bengals are 2-0. And as you guys know, I've... I don't like Andy Dalton, but you know what? He's giving me some confidence that he can be an actual quarterback in this league. Not for long, though, because he's going to be going. He'll be going back to mediocre Andy Dalton very soon. But for now, hey, you did good, AJ Green. Good job, dude. You're actually being a top ten wide receiver. Good job. Chiefs and Steelers. Holy moly, forty-two to thirty-seven. Whoa, high-scoring game. Ben Roethlisberger. Good. Did really good. Chiefs did better. Patrick Mahomes, again, threw six touchdown passes. That's 10 on the year. That's 10. You know, if not statistically, if you were to multiply how many touchdowns he throws every two weeks. So let's do the math here. He throws 10 touchdowns in two weeks. There are 16 weeks or 16 games in the NFL season. There's 17 weeks, but 16 games. If we multiply 10 by 8, that's 80 touchdown passes that Patrick Mahomes can throw in this season. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but uh, it's just kind of fun to see if we continue to do that. We'd have the first ever quarterback to do that, but obviously that's not going to happen because the best, the most touchdowns ever thrown was Peyton Manning in like 2013, 14, when he threw 57. So, that's not going to happen. But hey, wouldn't it be cool if it did, though? <laughs> I think it'd be really, really cool. All right, going on to the Dolphins and the Jets. Ugh. I mean, I had some faith in the Jets. But uh, they kind of let me down this week and last week. So, the Dolphins won. Again, the Dolphins are doing better than expected. Uh, they are 2-0, I believe. And I, I wasn't expecting that. They're 2-0. They have Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> but they have a decent running back, I guess. Their team is decent. But they haven't really played that many good opponents. The Titans and the Jets. So next week is really going to show what this team is all about. Eagles and Buccaneers. Okay, this goes back to my question. Are the Buccaneers legit? Or are the Eagles bad? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know yet. Eagles, they're a complete team. There's no reason to call them bad. They just won the Super Bowl. Nick Foles will be will be uh, the backup quarterback next week. So, or this week, I mean. So, I mean, we're gonna see how the Eagles are gonna be this week. We're gonna find out. Buccaneers, wow. Ryan, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, dude. If you have him in fantasy, no one started him for the second week. Everyone thought the everyone thought the first week was a fluke, and it wasn't. Second week, here he goes, throwing more touchdowns. I just can't believe how good he's doing against good defenses. Um, but, I mean, who's going to start when Jameis Winston comes back? I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, let's continue on here. Browns and Saints. The Browns were so close to getting that first W, but they lost 21 day team. Saints, you almost lost to the Browns. Okay, be careful. You don't, I mean, you're 1-1, one one, but be careful. You don't, I mean, hey, keep losing. Packers have your first pick. Give us a high pick this year. I'm cool with it. But, hey, be careful. Saints win 21-18. Okay, cool. Colts and Redskins. 21-9 Colts. Eh, I thought the Redskins were going to be better. Alex Smith is was going back to throwing nine-yard passes to the tight end. 
So there, there's that. And, and in other news, Jordan Reed is not hurt. If, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> Colts actually won this game. Was very surprised. Okay, let's continue on here. Chargers and Bills. Oh, my gosh. Come on, Bills. Couldn't you just, like, keep Tyrod Taylor and half your defense? Couldn't you just... Or maybe draft some offensive line? Could, could you just do that? Maybe not be the Bills right now? And you're probably going to go, oh, and I would say maybe 3-13 and 13 this year. It's going to stink because when you have the top pick in the draft, what are you going to choose? You're not going to be choosing a quarterback because you just got Josh Allen. Who will you choose? Maybe a high, maybe a good um, left outside linebacker, right outside, a good linebacker in general. Uh, maybe, maybe a defensive end. But your defense has to start somewhere. And the good thing about it still is that you have Tredavious White, one of the best young rookie, not rookie anymore, but one of the best young corners in this league, which is good. So I mean, if you keep building that defense and maybe get a few linemen, maybe get a replacement for LaShawn McCoy, I think maybe you can win a game or two next year. But this won't be your year, and I think you guys have to accept that fact. Chargers did pretty good as well. Again, Chargers have a pretty decent team. I would say it's almost complete. Um, but you know what we saw from them last, few, last week, so, well, week one, so we don't really know. Chargers are still questionable. We don't really know what's up with them yet. Vikings and Packers, uh, you know, let me tell you something. Clay Matthews, that tackle, I get it. I understand why it's a rule. Don't put your hand under the quarterback's leg, but still, man, Clay made the exact, he made another mistake for the second week in a row, and it's okay, I understand that, but still, you don't make that call on a fourth down play, when the ball got intercepted for the win, you, I mean, you, you, I'm guessing for Vikings fans, you can have that, because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, your, your kicker missed three field goals, he missed three, one in regular time, and two in overtime, the Packers literally got away from that. The Packers had a bad moment happen to them, and the Vikings also had a bad moment, missing a 30, what was a 34 yard field goal at the end, the last few seconds. I get that. So I think I'm accepting when they tied this game 29 to 29, I accepted the tie, but I, found, I counted it as a loss in my head. But at the same time, I counted it as a tie because two teams messed up big time, and when that happens, you tie. So I get it. I think this is also one of the first times in the NFL season where we had two ties. I may be wrong, but what I do know is that this is the first time, this is, this is one of the first three times ever that three teams, or uh, that more than one team has tied. So what I mean by that is that you have four teams that have a tie on their record. So basically, if you don't understand what I'm saying, Two separate ga two, in two separate weeks, there were a tie. Only, that's only happened three times in the NFL. So what's the chance that that happened back-to-back? -back? I doubt it's happened before. Panthers and Falcons. This was a good game. 31-24. to This is the game I wanted to see. Two teams that are on the verge of making the playoffs. They definitely will, or can. The Falcons won. Good for them. Texans and Titans. I was super confused about this game because Deshaun Watson's back. Will Fuller was playing, and so was, oh my gosh, DeAndre Hopkins. Forgot his name. Titans won that game. Was it without Marcus Mariota? I don't actually know. And if it was without Marcus Mariota, Texans, what is going on? You have a very good defense. You have two good wide receivers. You have Lamar Miller, I think, still, I believe. And if you do... You should have been better than the Titans. There's no excuse. Speaking of no excuses, Cardinals, you have no excuses for not scoring a single point against the Rams. You don't. Let's look at last week. What was the score for last week for the Rams? They scored 33 points and the Raiders scored 13. The Raiders put up points. The Cardinals put up zero. You have David Johnson... You have Larry Fitzgerald, and you have a Sam Bradford. That's the I don't see. That's the thing in the NFL. I don't understand why how you can sign a quarterback that's known for getting injured a lot, and then draft a top five quarterback in the draft. 
you have two quarterbacks I don't like. I mean, I understand. Oh, let's draft this rookie with one of our top picks and not start him until week four, until Sam Bradford gets injured. That is good developmental time for your quarterback. I still don't understand it, really. Rams blew you out, and I think very soon, sooner rather than later, Josh Rosen will come on the field. And that's what I'm thinking. For fantasy owners, if you have David Johnson, if you have Larry Fitzgerald, don't trade them now. I'm telling you this because I think Josh Rosen is the best quarterback in this draft class as we speak. And when I say that, I mean Sam Darnold can definitely develop and Baker Mayfield can definitely develop into a top 15 quarterback in this league. But right now, Josh Rosen is definitely the hot, the best ready now quarterback we have. However, I did see Baker Mayfield last week and or this week and he definitely showed something. So that, that, that that's something that uh you guys have to think about here. Uh, if you're if you're playing fantasy here, um, because I think Josh Rosen, if his wide receivers can't get open, he's gonna ditch it over to David Johnson. Those receptions count if you're playing PPR. Either way, Rams they're legit. They are two and zero, and they have scored a lot of points so far. And that defense made them score zero. So I'm a little scared about the Rams as as a, as, a, as, a, as a fan of the NFC. I'm a little frightened. Speaking of frightened, Lions. <laughs> uh, they uh, they almost beat the 49ers, but they shouldn't have. They this, this shouldn't have been a close game, but it was. 49ers won. Jimmy G, good game, buddy. Didn't have a chance to see this. I could actually ask my roommate how the game went because he loves the Niners, but uh, don't actually know how this game ended up being. Raiders and Broncos. Two teams that I have no idea what they're doing this season. You have a coach... Jay Gruden, what I mean, I like him as a coach. I loved him as a Buccaneer coach. But the Broncos are 2-0. They're undefeated right now, and I wasn't expecting this. I expected the Raiders to win that game. I may have picked the Broncos, but secretly, I wanted the Raiders to pull one out, but they didn't. So, Broncos, you surprised me so far. Case Keenum, I think you surprised some people as well. Patriots and Jaguars, yes. Finally, so the Jaguars have shown that they can play some offense. And when you have some offense as the team of the Jacksonville Jaguars, even though it was really, really hot in Jacksonville, when you have a decent offense, but a god, amazing defense, you're going to win a lot of games, and you're going to beat one of the best teams in the AFC and the Patriots. So, the next question is, what won it for the Patriots? What won it for the Jaguars? Was it the temperature, or just was it the overall play of the Patriots? And that we will find out this week. We're going to keep examining how the Patriots play. Because for now, let's, let's just watch the Jaguars and appreciate how they're playing. Cowboys and Giants. I thought the Giants were going to win this. Turns out that Dak Prescott decided to be decent. And the Giants lost. No one was open. Eli had a bad, rough time. Cowboys won. I'm super surprised. Let's continue on. Seahawks and Bears. <laughs> I mean, I Seahawks were close. They were really close to winning this game. But the Bears, I mean, again, I, I'm still frightened that, that the Packers have to face them two times in a year, every single year, until Rodgers retires. Well, forever, actually, technically, but Khalil Mack-wise versus Aaron Rodgers-wise, this is two times a year. This is going to be a tough team to beat, and I think the Bears are going to continue to dominate some good offenses. Jets and the Browns this week, as I said before. Already went over that game. So now we are on the predictions for this week, for week three of the NFL. Bills and Vikings, this is a little, literally a laugh stock of a question who's going to win this game. If the Vikings lose, I will literally throw a parade. You, you, if my roommate is listening to this, I will literally dance around the room and laugh because if the Bills beat the Vikings, I will da laugh my butt off. However, if they do win, if the Bills do win, I will also in the same aspect be sad only because the Vikings tied with the Packers. But th literally, there is no way at all at Minnesota that this Buffalo team with Josh Allen is going to win. You know what? I'm actually going to take the time to go on one of my apps on my iPhone. I only say this because I want to see how many points the Vikings are favored by. 
while we're talking, I'm just going to apologize for my voice. I'm a little stuffy today. I don't know what's up. Okay. Oh, wow. Minnesota <laughs> is... <laughs> they are a 16 and a half point favorite. You know what, though? Even with that being said, I'm still going to take the under... I think is what you call it. I'm taking the Bills points wise, but I'm taking the Vikings the winning the game wise. If you're if you're betting, bet on the Bills to to match that margin. I think this game will be a little bit closer than a seven than 17 points. I mean, who knows? Maybe not. Maybe the Bills won't score anything because they probably won't with that awful offensive line. LaShawn McCoy won't go anywhere. So with that said, I'm guessing Vikings will obviously win this. Texans and Vikings. Uh, wow, Texans and Vikings. No, no, Jared. That's the wrong game. That's the wrong one. Giants and Texans. Yeah, Giants and Texans. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, so these are two teams. I have no idea what they're doing right now. Two offenses that can be good if they try. Two defenses that can be good if they try. So really, I don't have a winner for this. Except I'm going to pick one randomly. Texans, you're at home. Go get it. Go get it, boy. That's winning. I mean, Saquon Barkley is going to have a tough time with J.J. Watt, maybe. And if Clowney can come back, maybe they have a chance. Who knows? I'll just take the Texans because they're home. Packers and Redskins, this will be fun. I love I love when the Packers play every single week. I watch their games, but I don't, I, I, it sucks because I get to miss them sometimes. I have, I'm in a fraternity, so I have to miss it because of chapter. Kind of stinks, but you know what? Love the fraternity. <laughs> so, Packers are winning, okay? I, I'm picking them only because they have been they have been playing very good with Rodgers. However, if he's not in this game, as I said before, the Packers will lose. I don't believe in Deshaun Kaiser right now. So, Redskins only win if Rodgers isn't playing. Packers win if he is. That's my prediction for that one. 49ers and Chiefs. Sorry, Niners fans. Patrick Mahomes is legit, their defense is decent, and their offense is holy moly Tyreek Hill. Chiefs are winning. Raiders and Dolphins. Again, questionable teams that didn't expect to, to play the way I predicted. Dolphins are actually going to win this one. That's my prediction. Um, it wouldn't shock me if the Raiders won, but uh, when you have a 2-0 team with some confidence, when you, when you are ahead of the Patriots in the division, you're going to try your best to keep that spot. I think the Dolphins are going to win. They're at home. They have a chance. Give them an opportunity. Give Ryan Tannehill an opportunity. I think he may show that he's decent. Okay. So, Dolphins are winning. Who knows? Colts and Eagles. Okay. Carson Wentz is back. No more jokes. Eagles are winning. There's no question about it. Colts only have Quentin Nelson on their offensive line. There's no hope for that, deep, for that offense to hold up. Colts may pass a lot. I mean, how many throws has Andrew Luck thrown this season? I, will, I wish I had a stat line so I could tell you how many. I don't know. But the Eagles have a good defense, a good, good corners, good linebackers, good everything. They're going to win. There's no question in my mind. If they do, again, I'll laugh a little bit in my head, and we'll continue on. Titans and Jaguars. This is an easy one as well. Jaguars are home again. They beat the Patriots. If you can beat the Patriots, you can beat the Titans. Jaguars are winning this game. Bengals and Panthers. Interesting game lineup here. You have two teams that are decent. You know what? For the first time in my life, I'm going to bet toward the Bengals. It, it, it is a tough matchup decision only because Joe Mixon is out. And if he was playing 100%, I would pick the Bengals. But some reason, I, I'm getting this feeling that Andy Dalton will, will do good in this game. I think he might. He has a chance. And I'm not going to trash talk him anymore until he gives us a bad game. So, until then, I will pick the Bengals to win every game they play. Bengals are beating the Panthers, maybe. Just maybe. But I will pick the Bengals. Broncos and Ravens. Fun game here. Don't know who's going to win. Case Keenum, you, I mean, you are 2-0. Good job on that one. I mean, you're playing against mediocre Joe Flacco. Eh. But again, you know what? I'm going to take the Broncos. Why not? They're 2-0. Let's continue. Let's keep going. Keep bidding that decent record. You might actually make the playoffs. You won't. But we'll continue on here. Saints and Falcons. I think this is the time that Drew Brees and the defense of the Saints show that they're actual contenders because they've been playing like a doo-doo these past two weeks against mediocre teams. We don't actually know if they're good or not. But two meh teams. Meh teams. 
I think it's time for the Saints to actually do good and actually win a game. I'm taking the Saints over the Falcons. Chargers and Rams. Well, this is an interesting one. Phillip Rivers is old, but they have a full, they have a full decent team. You want to know who else has a decent team? The, the, the Rams. The Rams have a really, really good team. They blew out the last two teams they played. There's no way I'm voting, I'm voting against them. Rams are winning. Bears and Cardinals at 425. Mmm. Okay. Cardinals scored no points last week, so there's no way I'm voting towards them. Until jo Josh Rosen comes in, there's no way Sam Bradford will lead any team in the NFL to a victory. I just can't see it happening. It's not going to happen. You have... You, you just... When you have a bad quarterback, you aren't good. Packers had a decent team last year, but with Aaron Rodgers is out, the whole team kind of sucks. So, Bears are winning. Again. <laughs> They're going to be 2-1. It's going to be fun. Cowboys and Seahawks. These are two teams that I've kind of hyped up and trash-talked. A mix of both. I don't like Dak Prescott, but I like I like Russell Wilson. It would be very sad to see the Cowboys win against the Seahawks, but guess what? They're not going to. I think Dak Prescott is going to struggle with the loud noise at, uh, at the Seahawks field here right now. I forgot. What is it called? I have no idea. <laughs> Usually, I remember. I remember stadiums that are this legit. But I think the Seahawks are going to win. I don't think. Uh, I don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to take up the loudness of Seahawks. Pan. Oh, I'm saying Panthers. Patriots and Lions. Again, this is this is literally a joke game. Patriots are winning, and of course, it's Sunday Night Football. I don't know why it is. At this point, literally, I'm looking at all the games this week. Make the Niners and the Chiefs Sunday Night Football. That would be more watchable than the than the Patriots and Lions. This game won't be fun to watch. If you're a Patriot fan, you get a free a free game to watch your best team, your favorite team blow out the Lions. And if the Lions won, <laughs> that would be pretty funny. All right, Patriots are winning that one. Steelers and Buccaneers for the last game of the week on Monday Night Football. Woo, Steelers and Bucks. Okay. Here is here is my little talk. Steelers are okay. They're good. Offensively, they're one of the best in the AFC. But without Le'Veon Bell, I don't know what you're going to do. James Conner has shown that he is decent in this league. But at the same point, you always need Le'Veon Bell. When you have Le'Veon Bell, you can, you can uh, uh, right away be a top 15, top 10 offense in the NFL. So with that said... Who will win between the Bucks and the Steelers? Let me tell you something, folks. I think that Ryan Fitzpatrick will lead this team to their third win in a row. I don't think the NFL is ready for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I say that very jokingly, but I kind of mean it. Because I'm very confused on how this team is doing so good. We're going to find out this week. If the reason why this team is doing good is because the teams they faced aren't good, the Saints, number one, and number two, the Eagles, the Super Bowl winning Eagles. This is two teams, two top three NFC teams that have lost to the Buccaneers. If they win this game, Ryan Fitzpatrick for MVP. I say that very jokingly, but I kind of mean it. I don't understand what this team is good at. I don't get it. I'm going to watch the tape a few more times, but I, I, I still don't understand. And if they win this week, I will be very, very confused, and I may add them to a underdog uh, Dark Knight prediction of a Super Bowl contender, but they won't be that. Because I don't understand why this team is so good. Well, that, with that said, that's the, that's the freaking picks for the week. That's every single pick. We're done here. How, how long has this podcast been? Okay, cool. We're under 30 minutes. That, that, was, that, was, the, uh, that was the plan this week. Cool. All right, guys. That's it for the huddle. Week three. My name is Jared JP. If you want to find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I'll leave all the handles down below. And again, of course, I'll see you guys next week. Go Pack Go. Go every other NFL team you like. See you later, guys.